Murphy has been chairman of Krebs 21, an association that investigates non-university cancer therapies for over 20 years. He travels the world to find out how cancer is treated in other countries and how successful those therapies are. His specialty is researching therapies that people have made and gone through to get healthy. And even when conventional doctors told them there was no help. He is also the only student of the very well-known researcher, Dr. Joanna Budwick, inventor of the oil protein diet and the famous Budwick protocol, and former research director of the National Foundation for Alternative Medicine in Washington, D.C. since year 2006. He has been sharing his knowledge worldwide at lectures and also in Germany at his 3E Center. So without further ado, I'll hand over the floor to Mr. Lothar. I am very um, happy that I pronounced your name correctly. I saw you nodding over there. So please let me know if I have done it correctly. <laughs> yes, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear from Mr. Lothar. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. Yes, and you, you spelled my name nearly perfect. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Yeah, um, it's early morning, but not for me. I'm an, an early bird anyway, so um, um, that, that, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, I would like to speak with you today about uh, the psychosomatic aspects uh, of cancer. And uh, even uh, Ms. Green already introduced uh, a little bit. Let me, <clears throat> let me tell you again, this is our center in Germany. Um, where around 90% of the patients who are coming to us are so-called given up patients, which means they have a, a very long-term cancer history and they, uh, most of them, they have metastasis uh, in all organs, a different body helps. <clears throat> and so um, in what they do, they come for a four-week program. So we only accept every four weeks uh, patients and they come together in a group. This is a very important part for us because we want <clears throat> that they create uh, what, what we call uh, a healing heaven um, where the group is helping each other. So this is why they come for four weeks. Um, <clears throat> in the last 20 years, just to, to speak about a few things about myself, <clears throat> in the last 24 years, meanwhile, wow, long time, uh, I spoke with more than 10,000 uh, mostly final stage uh, cancer patients uh, all over the world. And um, what did I do? I tried to find out what they did not to die, even if doctors um, uh, said to them, you know, you have to die in a few weeks, in a few months or, or, or a year or something. And... Um, before I come to the psychosomatic aspects, let me just uh, three, four, five minutes introduce to you why we are doing things differently, because it's very important to understand this. Otherwise, you will not understand why we are doing this. Okay, so, <clears throat> you know, today, um, that, that's the, the theory of cancer. Cancer is just a mutation because of virus and toxins and then um, a, a few wrong growth signals coming out and at the end you have mutations. But why do so many doctors uh, are thinking that the mutation is the cause? I tell you why. Because it's not the doctors, it's the pathologists who are always see under the microscope following. That's, you know, that's what they're seeing. They see mutations. But there is a main, main problem. A pathologist sees a tumor after, think about it. When do a pathologist is seeing a tumor? After one cell division, when the tumor starts, or after 30, 40, 50, 100? And we all know the answer. It's after 30, 40 cell divisions. So there is no early cancer detection or something, what I always say. Because most patients and even doctors, they do not understand that tumors grew over years before being discovered. So especially in lung or in bladder cancer, it's many, many years before a doctor can see it. And you know what nobody tells you is that this theory of the mutation was already disproved in the 70s and 80s. I will ex ex show you this, why. Already uh, beginning of the 70s, two American researchers, Ilmense and Stevens, they, made, they, they published this one here. And what, what have they done? 
they just um, um, transplanted the genes of the cancer cells into other cells. Because everybody was saying the genes, the, 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 the mutation in the DNA is responsible for cancer. And you know what happened? Nothing happened. And <clears throat> many years later, in 88, Professor Warren Sheffer in, in America, he did the same with the same result. And in the same year, another professor, Jerry Shea, published this one. <clears throat> he also did the same. But Jerry Shea went one step more forward. You know, he did uh, something very interesting. He did the DNA, the genes, out of a healthy cell into a cancer cell. Before, he did the cell nucleus out of this cancer cell. So at the end, you had a cancer cell with healthy cell nucleus. And then he injected this into animals, in mice and frogs and different animals. And you know what happened? They got a tumor. So cancer was the result of doing this. But how is this possible? Because the conventional medicine pretends today that in the DNA lies the only reason of cancer. But, you know, the funny thing here is, uh, Harold Ramos and um, Michael Bishop, in, in 89, one year after Shea and Trevor published all this work, they got the Nobel Prize for this theory of the mutation. This is a really strange thing. And, um, and I tell you, all over the world at the universities, they don't teach all these kind of studies because it would kill the whole theory of the mutation. But this is very important because if the mutation is not the cause of cancer, what else is it? What we know today is the mutation is, is just that the theory is not working anymore. This theory is just um, the mutations are never the reason for cancer. Of course, I'm not saying there is no mutation. Of course, there is a mutation. But the mutation is not, and this is the most important thing here, is not the cause and it's not in the beginning. The mutation comes later if somebody has cancer. So if the mutation is not a cause, what is it? <clears throat> to understand what cancer is, we have to understand the evolution and we have to understand the law of evolution. And the, and the most important law in the evolution is surviving. Let me explain this, what this means. <clears throat> you know, health is the most important thing we have. Love and health and our belief. <clears throat> That's the sweet thing. So, and people, of course, they think if they are ill, if there is a disease, this is a very bad thing. They think they go down, but maybe it's totally different. When you think that a symptom, when you think that a disease is not something bad, but it's a very, very good thing because it's a regulation process in your body and in your mind, then you can see the whole story in a very, very different way. And this is what it is. And there's one more thing you have to understand. <clears throat> All illnesses. All disease, they go in a timeline. In the beginning, the regulation is very positive and the regulation has only one purpose and it is survival. So your body, your mind, it doesn't matter is it depression or is it uh, high blood pressure or is it cancer. In the beginning, there's only one purpose and it is survival. When, it, when we come to cancer, most people don't understand how can be a, a tumor a positive thing. A tumor is killing myself and a, a tumor can't be positive. Not at all. I just show you a few things. A good thing, what a tumor is doing, it burns down sugar, which is very important. I explain this later. <clears throat> uh, it burns down and blocks toxins and fungus and, and many, many other things. So in the beginning, the tumor is helping you to survive. Later, of course, death will come and later it kills you. So the main problem of the conventional medicine today is just <clears throat> when they see the symptoms, for them, a symptom is always bad. A high blood pressure, cancer, diarrhea, it doesn't matter what it is. A doctor is thinking a symptom is a bad thing because he is not understanding that a symptom is nothing else than a part of a regulation system for surviving. 
So, <clears throat> and now let me explain to you why uh, our psyche is more important in oncology than our body. <clears throat> so, let's first have a look uh, to the three causes of cancer. So, of course, there are toxins which can make a tumor or some virus. But you know what the doctors are don't telling you is um, that's maybe three, four, five, six percent of all the tumors. It's only a few tumors and not hundred percent like the conventional medicine is saying. So toxins and virus can make a tumor, but only a few percent of all the tumors. <clears throat> Quite more. Um, why people get the tumors is the traumas and long-term stress. And <clears throat> doctors and also the patients are not understanding very well why traumas and especially long-term stress can make uh, a tumor, can produce in the body a tumor. Let me explain this to you. <clears throat> it's very, very easy to understand. When you have a long-term stress, and with long-term, I mean many months or even in most of the cases we have, it's many years where the people are having not a, a trauma where it's something really hard what happened in their life. No, no, no. <clears throat> it's a small long-term stress. For example, they are not happy with the marriage. They are not happy with their profession. They are just not happy. This is already a long-term stress. Then you know what happens? your adrenaline level goes down in the body. And you know what doctors are not doing? They never measure the adrenaline of their cancer patients. We're doing this. And I can tell you, we have groups sometimes where more than 90% has nearly no adrenaline anymore in the body. You know what happens if you have stress? Your kidneys can only produce a maximum amount of adrenaline. If you have a whole, whole day or whole year long-term stress, the adrenaline level, in the beginning it goes up, of course, but later it goes down. And then what happens in your body? You know, on the other part um, is insulin. Insulin is bringing sugar into the cell. And adrenaline helps to, to get it out. So insulin brings the sugar still into the cell, and a little sugar is perfect for a cell, but too much sugar is killing a cell and makes a lot of problems in the cell. So the cell has to find a way to get rid of the sugar. So over millions of years, the evolution found a very intelligent way. It changed the process um, from a, a normal process using oxygen in a cancer cell, uh, sorry, in a cell to a fermentation process. Fermentation just means you burn down sugar without oxygen. And that's a cancer cell. A cancer cell is nothing else than a fermentation machine, you know, a fermentation process where the cell has to burn down sugar without oxygen. Why is our body doing this? Because a fermentation process can burn down 10, 18 more times sugar than if the cell is using oxygen. So you see a cancer cell is high intelligent and is not is an evolution, evolutionary system. It's not that a cancer cell wants to kill you. Of course not. No, the cancer cell only wants to help you to burn down sugar or to burn down um, some toxins or other things. So it's just changing on a small part in your body to a fermentation process. So when we look to all the things, diagnosis and, 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 and therapy option, so what should we do if we have cancer patients as a therapist? Of course, if there are toxins and virus, the first of all, we have to check whether there are toxins in the body. Do you know that conventional medicine is always saying mutations are coming from toxins, but you know what they never do? They never test the toxins in cancer patients. They just say it's coming because you smoke too much or you eat too bad and blah, 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 blah. But they never check it because if they would check it, they would find out that most cancer patients, they don't have problems with toxins. You can't find toxins in them. But of course, if you have the maybe 5%, you do some detoxification. With traumas, it's the same. 
trauma there's one good thing <clears throat> most people if you ask them do you have a trauma or did you have or can you remember they will tell you this they will say yes and that and if not we do some in a world travel i explain later to you what it is conversations and then at the end like in a normal psychotherapy you find a solution you lift them this is also very important because sometimes you find the cause sometimes you tell the patient there is a solution for that but then he is not able to lift this solution so this is why it's also important not only finding the cause but also to show the patient a way that he can can live this new life now and my personal experience now for more than 20 years and we have our center now for 15 years my personal experience is that long term stress is the most important uh, cause of all kind of cancers so what are we doing we we check the so called catecholamine minds this is adrenaline no adrenaline dopamine all these hormones we make a stress profile profile and then <clears throat> we do the same like with the traumas we find solutions so let's go more in details about this what do we do differently at at our center <clears throat> Uh, first of all we do the oil protein diet um, i'm not talking today about oil protein diet i just want to mention it we um, by the way with to oil protein diet it's not enough just to do the protocol what you also need you need the best food you can get you know the the 100% organic you see we even have our own bees for our honey so what else do we do of course we do detoxification processes many we we use a, a pep emi machine to bring electrons into the body we do a daily daily bath with baking soda to bring the acid out of the body we do daily enemas we do not daily but on a weekly basis colon hydro therapy we we check the teeth and so on and so on so we do a lot of detoxification i'm i'm not talking about this now <clears throat> i want to talk about two other things the first thing is search for the cause this is absolutely the most important thing at all if you don't find the cause how can you stop the illness and how can you stop that the illness will come back so we we do something most doctors are not doing anymore we are talking and talking and talking to patients so we do individual conversations we do group conversations we do psychobionic this is the, the so called inner world traveling it's uh, maybe not that popular in outside of germany it's something maybe you know like the journey from brenton base so what we are doing is we do a process a four week process a four week transformation in the first week it's more you know a creating a inner peace and relaxation the, you know the people first have to come down this is the most important thing at all coming down as a cancer patient i will explain this uh, in in details in 2 minutes so this is the first part the second part in the second week is Uh, a lot of visualization training because we want to create the future we want to give them something where they can create their own future by themselves and this you only can do through a visualization or sometimes also through a meditation process but we use more the visualization process then in the week 3 it's more about um uh, forgiveness it's more about self love it's more about understanding that everybody is such a great person <clears throat> and then in the in the in the fourth week we just creating a new vision um here maybe very important is to understand <clears throat> that there is always a reason for a tumor there is a reason why somebody has that kind of tumor and in that position in the body so you have to find the cause and uh i would say in 50% of the cases it's um, nearly a easy thing just ask the patient why do you have cancer and he will give you the answer quite often and then you only have to check is this answer correct and the other 50% you just have to talk to talk to talk and to talk to find it out and there is another good thing here <clears throat> if a patient is understanding there is a reason for the tumor then he also understand that he and not his doctor that he 
can do something. Um, also important here is to tell the patient that he is not guilty. You know, it's not that, that we say, hey, because you did this or that bad in your life, you got cancer. Of course, this is not true. He is not guilty. He has to understand that his illness is nothing else than just a part of his old life, but now he can start a new life. So this is maybe the most important thing to understand. And then over the years, we developed something, what we call the parasympathetic training. You know, we have these two nerve systems, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. <clears throat> and a lot of patients and even doctors, they don't understand one. And today for me, the most important thing at all in cancer therapy, they don't understand that the body and even the mind, but especially the body, can only repair in a parasympathetic status. So only if you are relaxed, and I'm not talking about sleeping at night, if you are very ill, you need this nearly 24 hours the whole day. But here comes, unfortunately, the, the not so easy part of this. <clears throat> you know, if I tell you, hey, do not get upset. Hey, just relax. Jay, just come down. Will this work? Will you come down? Will you be relaxed if I tell you this? Even if I show you how to meditate or do a visualization, I tell you something from my experience. That's the hardest work we, we are doing is the parasympathetic training. It's not that easy to show people, especially final stage patients, and tell them, hey, come down. Hey, relax. Hey, meditate. Don't think about this. Don't think about your family. Don't think about this and that. You know, this is hard work, believe me. But this is the most important thing because once more, if you don't do that, if you don't go in a parasympathetic status, your body can't repair. And then if you do the best detoxification, the best nutrition, it will not work because you have to give the, the, the body the parasympathetic status to repair the cancer cells. <clears throat> so we do uh, a 13 steps program. We call it the, the new life, the life uh, 2.0 uh, instead of 1.0. This is the old life. So I just go fast through the points. I can't, can't go too deep in the steps all. But <clears throat> what is it? First is parasympathetic. We explain to the, to the patients why this is so important to go into this status. Um, then we create together with them a so-called you. You means just <clears throat> you first come down, you relax, you first come down, then there you, you create the future, and then you go up to lift the future. <clears throat> um, to do this, you, you have to find a, a, a positive focus because Many, many people, most, most of our patients, you know, they're living a negative focus. They always focused on the negative things in their life and only on the positive side, what they would like to have, what, but what they don't have at the moment. So we focus them on all the things they have already because most people, they don't need extra things. They have it already, but you have to show it to them. <clears throat> And then we do the so-called cell whispering. This is just a, a few techniques um, at, um, where we show them how they can support the body, that the body can repair itself. This is um, um, a part of the parasympathetic uh, priority. And then we do new mindsets in uh, all different uh, 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 ways, <clears throat> just a, a totally new thinking. Um, then we show them how they can leave their past, you know, um, uh, how it's possible to let go all the heavy and, and, and the burden thing. And that's, by the way, not that difficult. You don't have to do, uh, I don't know, a, a two-year psychotherapy for that. No, 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 no. There are simple ways uh, to do it. <clears throat> then self-love is also self-love, go goes mostly together with forgiveness, um, is also important thing. <clears throat> Because there are a lot of people, especially women, they love the family, they love the husbands, but they are not able really to love themselves. <clears throat> then being happy. This is something, um, it's very hard for our patients to understand. 
Um, maybe you think about when you felt in love la uh, last time, even I know it's, it's maybe a long time ago. <clears throat> when you felt in love, you feel great. You are full of energy. And this, but you can't tell cancer patient, hey, please fall in love. So, but you remember maybe. So, you know, if you are happy, if you fall in love, you know, you, you have all the energy to change the world. And this energy we want to have back with our cancer patients. This is why we show them being happy. This is why they have to, to, to find ways of being happy. Time of silence is, is another point. Um, we just show them that uh, how silent can help, you know, to get a deeper insight. Self-confidence, uh, I think I don't have to explain this to you, how important this is. Self-confidence also for cancer patients is very important. Think about it. If you have no self-confidence and you go to a doctor, the, you will do whatever he is saying, you will not think about. You need self-confidence just for a talk to a doctor. And then the next step is what kind of future do I want or what kind of future do I need now? So we, we're going through, through a future process and the end of this future process is a 90-day focus where we create for everybody for 90 days um, when, they, when they leave our center for 90 days. <clears throat> and then uh, at the end, we create a so-called best day. This is just, <clears throat> we create one perfect day to show the patients, you know, you can have a perfect day and you can have more of them. So <clears throat> at all, our guests just learn following. All symptoms are making sense. And at first, they're always good. And we explain this in detail to them, that they understand this, that cancer is not in the beginning at first a bad thing. It's just a part for surviving. Then, of course, no long time healing without understanding the cause. For me, it's, it's, it's really strange that conventional medicine is still not doing this. <clears throat> then, of course, focus on anti-stress therapies. Uh, we even, believe it or not, we use even in Germany the word double happiness from the uh, Chinese normally at a wedding party or something. So we tell them happiness is not enough. You need double happiness. If you are ill, you need more happiness. <clears throat> um, what else do we tell them, show them? <clears throat> we show them just they need discipline. This is another thing a lot of people don't understand. If you are very ill, you need a high discipline uh, to come out. <clears throat> Two more minutes. <clears throat> and uh, you need some system jumps. System jumps is just, you know, that you go out of the systems where you're living in, your family, your job, your spiritual life, and so on. Because we always tell them, if nothing changed, nothing changed. One more thing, uh, tumors have not been uh, always destroyed. Um, don't misunderstand me. I'm not against operations, but operation is good for people who are in a very deep stress but if you understand that the tumor is a symptom and not an illness, you don't have to go for, for the operation straight away. And the most important thing is cancer is curable as long as you can find the cause. So I need one more minute to show you how successful uh, this is, what I told you. We did a study with uh, 67 uh, uh, patients. <clears throat> All of them had a, just a life expectancy of uh, a maximum of six months, most of them even less. And that was the outcome after two years, you know. More than half of them, 36, were still alive. Eight had a complete remission. And there were even two uh, patients with pancreatic cancer who had a negative uh, a PET, a positron Emerson tomography. This is also an important thing we, we, we tell the patients, you know. You have <clears throat> some time to live with a tumor for many years with lung, with cancer, with pancreatic. The tumor will not go in a few days. The tumor will stay for a long time, but if the tumor is not active anymore, it doesn't matter, you know. If you have a tumor, for example, in, in the lung, you can easily live with it for many years. So, and, um, so what can you do? Just take responsibility. Do the 3E program. Be patient and disciplined. And the most important thing, when you have cancer, already start today to look forward to a very, very happy life. So, and for all of you all over the world, you have to understand today, it's another day in paradise. Thank you very much for listening to me. <clears throat>